Hello there. The topic of this video is going to be physics collision shapes, and the format will be similar to our previous physics video. We'll start by showing some demonstration of the topic, and at the end we'll show how you can set up physics collision shapes in Unity and in Buildbox. Let's start by looking at the shape types that we're going to mention in this video. As you can see, we have a half ring as an example for concave shape, and the other shape type is convex, and we have an oval as an example. Here's some more examples of concave shapes. We have the half ring, then we have our torus, and we have a tube, and then we have a helix. From looking at a torus and a tube, we can see one way we can tell if the shape is concave. Both of them have a hole that goes through them. So from that we can say that any object or shape that has holes in it has a concave shape. How we can tell that the half ring and the helix are concave shape is by doing a line test. If you can draw a line through a shape, and the line intersects at more than one point of the shape. As we can see for our half ring, we have our first intersection, our entry point and the exit point, and then we have the second intersection, entry point and exit point. Then the shape is a concave shape. A convex shape will only have one intersection, one entry point and one exit point. You can't draw a straight line that will have two intersections on these shapes. These are some examples of convex shapes. A circle, a triangle, a cube, a cylinder. And for all these shapes, if you draw a straight line, there's only one point that it will enter and one point that it will exit. So these are the two shape types. Now in game physics, at some point we need to select a collision type that we want to use so that the game engine would calculate for all the collisions that go on in the game. The two common collision types that we have in games is a mesh collision type and as you can see in this demonstration the dynamic walls are falling inside the mesh. They follow the geometry of the mesh. And the second one is the hole collision type and in here we can see there's an invisible bridge between the two edges of our half ring. And it's because when we select a hole collision type on the half ring, a collision shape that gets created for a half ring is actually a half a cylinder. So that's why we have that invisible bridge. So now let's take a look where would we use hull and where would we use mesh. So let's start with the easy one. For all convex shapes, you use hull collision type. In Unity, you can do that by setting convex to true inside a mesh collider. But the question of what collision type to use for a convex shape is not that simple. And if you look at their previous demonstration of both types on the concave shape, you might think you just use a mesh collider on a concave shape. But that's not always true because the mesh collision type has its own limitations. Now let's look at the limitations of mesh versus hull. Here we have a hull suspended in air. If we turn on dynamic physics for this hull, we can see that the hull object has a mass and there's a mass distribution and the gravity that acts on it makes it fall on the ground. But if we try to do the same demonstration with a mesh object, turn on dynamic physics, in Unity that won't be even possible because Unity does not allow dynamic physics on a mesh object since of Unity 5. The only options that you have for mesh collider is either static or kinematic. In Buildbox, you can enable dynamic physics on an object that has mesh collision shape, but it's not gonna entirely work as you would expect it. If we turn on dynamic physics for this object, it falls, and as you can see, as soon as it hits the ground, it just stays at that position. There's no angular velocity that is being calculated for the object to actually fall down, like you saw in the hull object. Again, on a mesh object, it just hits the ground and stops there. From this we can assume that not all of the physics properties are calculated for a dynamic mesh object. Now let's take a look at some interaction between two objects. So here we have a hull with a hull. If we turn on dynamic physics for our top torus, we can see it falls but it doesn't fall through the hull. For the mesh with mesh, if we do the same demonstration, there is no collision at all with the mesh. Now let's take a look at mesh with hull. We have hull objects at the bottom, which are set to static. Let's turn on physics for this one. And we can see that the mesh collides with the hull object, but it doesn't fall through. Now let's take a look at the demonstration on the left. And if we turn on dynamic physics for this one, we can see that the mesh successfully falls on the ground, allowing the hull to pass through the middle. Now let's set mesh as static and hull as dynamic. So for this demonstration, we can see some more realistic physics interaction with the torus when it falls through. 
in the demonstration on the right, we can see that we can't pass any objects through the whole object. So to recap, we have two types of shapes, concave shapes and convex shapes. And we have two collision types, mesh and hull. For all convex shapes, we use a hull. And for concave shape, if the object is static or kinematic, and we want other objects to pass through it, then we would use a mesh. If we have a concave shape, and we want to use dynamic physics on it, we need to use a hull. If you want to use a concave shape as a dynamic object, and you still want the ability of going through the object, you'll have to create multiple convex shapes that will create geometry that is close to what your concave shape is and use that collection of convex shapes to create a whole collider. Now let's take a look how we can configure collision types in BuildBox. Let's add a new object and let's use a torus. Then you can double click on the asset, then we select the start node and in our option panel we have the collision shape option. And here we can see that we have cube, sphere, cylinder, hull, and mesh. Cube, sphere, and cylinder are primitive collision shapes that are available, but their behavior is exactly as the hull object. So you can treat them as a hull object. And the mesh object is the one that allows hull objects to pass through them. And now let's take a look how we can set that up in Unity. We have our torus object. In Unity, if you look for Collider, you have all of these options. So you have the Box Collider and the Sphere Colliders, similar as we have in BuildBox. And there's a Mesh Collider. And when we select a Mesh Collider, we have the option of setting this Collider as a convex shape, which will create a hull. But by default, it's a Mesh object. And if you add a rigid body on it, and we try to run it, we get the error saying that non-convex mesh collider with non-kinematic rigid body is no longer supported since Unity 5. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, click on the like button, subscribe to our channel for more upcoming videos, and we'll see you next time.